Welcome back to a nice sunny day in Thailand and another toy has arrived. This one comes from the homeland, the Great White North. It's a battery charger and it's not just any battery charger, but wow, what a battery charger. Um, it was recommended by this guy and I'll put up his video showing he, um, he builds e-bike batteries and he categorized four different battery packs or sorry, battery chargers. This one was the top of the line uh, for many reasons. One, it's uh, highly configurable to the type of cell you're trying to charge and to the number of batteries in the charge. Um, it's virtually waterproof, so you can actually mount it on your bike and not have to keep it in a dry place. Um, it's very power dense for the size it's about the size of a good size hardback book. Um, it doesn't have a fan, so you don't have to worry about water getting into the fan. And uh, yeah, designed and built in Canada, so I'm really happy to support these guys. It comes from ebikes.ca, and I'll put the picture up here of their website and the snapshot of the charger on its page. Let's take a look at the specs of the charger. As you can see, we're on ebikes.ca, product cycle satiator. They have a ton of products, uh, but this is what we're focusing on today. If we scroll down, you can see the charger and all the features, programmable output, sealed, <clears throat> weather resistant uh, for on vehicle use, no fan, and a nice digital display that tells you exactly what's going on with the charger and you can adjust the settings, compatible with uh, most of the types of uh, batteries you're likely to find, universal power input, which is great for me here in Thailand. The display is quite nice, tells you exactly how far you are through the charge, the voltage point, the number of amps that are going into the pack. It's quite small. So let's go ahead and tear into this and have a look at it. Uh, the bonus today is we can actually plug it in and power it up and see it display something on the little uh, display on the side. It's not like the controller where it doesn't do anything useful until you have it wired into an actual motorbike. So let's go. And as AVE says, cut to the chum, not to your thumb. And again, I don't have my cardboard box opening chainsaw like he does. <clears throat> okay, here's the ooh, paper manual along with the uh, PDF that I have already downloaded, which is great. You don't get that a lot, but you can see how, how many uh, menus are on the uh, little display on the side of it, and you can customize it to exactly what your needs are. Bill of sale. My pleasure and hope this unit serves you well from Jason. Awesome. Um, the Thai postal people actually got me for the correct amount of duty on this thing, almost $50 on its value. It's uh, $300 Canadian plus some extra cables that I got. Translates into 9,000 baht at 7% tax is about... 1600 baht divided by 32 is about 50 US dollars. So, this is not a cheap enterprise, but like I always say, buy quality and you only cry once. So, this is the cable that your output goes from the battery pack here into your pack or into your. Yeah, from the char sorry from the charger here to your battery pack, and then this plug right here is where you connect up your data. So in here we've got cable, actually supplied several nice cables. This cable, hmm, interesting. I'll have to take a look at the difference between these two. Maybe this is the default cable, and then this is the one I ordered separately. 
to get the data out? I think so. This is apparently a popular connector for uh, small e-bikes and it uses a really super solid connector which is used generally for professional audio. It's nice and metal and waterproof and everything. That's great. This is the charging plug and I ordered the European standard which actually fits into the plugs here in Thailand. This is a standard kind of D connector that you find in the back of most uh, computer towers. So I'll be able to plug that in directly. Here's yet another cable. Ah, USB. Aha, yes. So this plugs into here and then that goes USB into my laptop for data and configuration. And then all that's left is the charger itself. And that's it. It's small, but it's dense. There's a lot going on in there. It's probably three inches by 10 inches by two and a half inches. And there's the display. There's the output to the battery. There's the AC input. And what's that guy? Hmm. Better not play with that till I read the directions. And of course, the ah, that wonderful feeling of peeling the protective plastic off. Oh, this little thing on the end says micro vent. I don't know if it's going to focus on that. Micro vent. So that must be kind of a waterproof-ish, water-resistant-ish way of allowing a little bit of the heat out. Okay, so let's give it a shot and plug it in okay. and power on. Oh, okay, we're booting. No pro profiles active. Select battery charge profile. 48 volt lithium, no. 52 volt, 72 volt lithium standard charger, 84 volts peak at, 50, at 5 amps. Hold to select. Okay. So, wow, it's that easy. That's exactly what I want. Now, you can go in, okay, activate, sure. You can go in and customize these to your heart's content, and there's a lot of status information that comes out too during the charge. It tells you exactly what's going on. And as we know with lithium batteries, they're like dragons, and you don't want to wake the dragon if you're a Game of Thrones fan. You have to treat them very, very well. Don't use up too much energy in them. Don't overcharge them. Don't charge them too hard. Don't discharge them too hard. But as long as you know the rules and play by the rules, they're brilliant and they will make you very, very happy. So, there we go. Oh, little mounting tab so I can mount it inside the bike. Awesome. All I need to do is make sure that I have external access to this plug or maybe run this to some kind of a, an adapter and I just plug a cord in from the outside into the side of the chassis, do something with the bodywork. All right. Okay. Almost everything I said about those cables is wrong. Five minutes with the manual and I figured it all out. So what I got right was this plugs in here like that, like so. Now, the thing I said was the standard battery connector. No, that, that's the only connector that comes out of the charger right here. So you got to go like that. And then you twist down the twisty part. And that locks into place. The other end of that cable is this thing. So basically, inside the bike, I'm going to be presented with this. Now, the other cable is the female to that. So this plugs in here. Oh, very nice. Now, so that means this connects to my battery pack. So I can either find the, uh, 
the matching version of that connector or hack it off and put something else on which then gets wired to the battery pack. Haven't decided how to go there yet. Now, this is the data cable. Now what happens is this cable plugs in here and the other end of that cable is USB. And as you see, it converts TTL to USB, transistor, transistor, logic to USB. So let's plug that in here. So we have to put the charger in PC mode. So the way we do that is we hold both the buttons down to go into setup. We go connect to PC and hold that down. Okay, ready for PC connection. Now, let's pop back over to the laptop. Okay, let's fire up the software. Satiator software suite. And we have this window. So the charger is ready to talk to us. So first we click connect over USB simulated COM port 4. And we're connected and we've got a list of predefined battery charging profiles. You see they have different voltages, 48, 52, 72, 88, and different battery types, lithium, lithium iron phosphate, which are the, the big square cells that are about 200 amp hours, and sealed lead acid. Then you also see standard charge and 85% charge, so we'll look into that. Let's take a look at my pack right here. This is the one I need. So 72 volt lithium standard charger. That's gonna make me happy. But it says full voltage is 84 volts. Now, one thing you need to know about lithium 18650 cells is they have a what's called a nominal voltage rating of about 3.7 volts. But when you're charging them, you charge them up to 4.2 volts. And then after you're done charging, the pack will settle down to that lower voltage point. So this reflects the knowledge that that's how you charge these batteries. And uh, during bulk current time of the charge profile, we're going to be pushing in uh, power at 5 amps, which is the maximum that this charger is, is capable of doing. So for this profile, it's going to start charging at 42 volts and with a very small amount of current, uh, 200 milliamps. Once it quickly goes from 42 to 58.8, then that's our bulk starting voltage and we're going to push five amps into the pack. When we reach 84 volts, the charge is considered complete and it will just barely trickle in 150 milliamps as we are at the top of the charging peak. So that's pretty much how that works. In addition to the profile, you can see that the charger keeps track of how you've uh, charged your pack so far in its lifetime. This is the number of watt hours it's uh, pushed in, the number of amp hours, the number of hours it's been charged, the number of times it's been charged, and then the averages of the number of watt hours per charge, amp hours, and number of hours, which is good. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Now, if we come over here and click on this one that says 85% charge, you're gonna see some of these values change. Now, this is pretty much the maximum rated safe charging for this particular type of cell. But there's a school of thought that says, let's only charge it to 85% and not to 100%. Tesla does this in the cars. Um, they call it long range mode or normal charging mode. And what it's intended to do is extend the life of the pack for many, many, many more charges. 18650 lithium cells like to be treated very gently. You don't wanna discharge them too far. You don't wanna charge them too high. You don't wanna charge them too fast or discharge them too fast. So. This profile is here for people who really want to baby their pack to get maximum lifetime. So you can see we've changed from 84 volts to 80.9, and that's considered full pack voltage. 
the minimum starting voltage also dropped down. I think it was 42. And the bulk starting voltage also dropped down slightly. So this is the way to be more gentle to your pack and give it longer lifestyle. So this is exactly what I'm looking for. You can also edit these profiles and change any of these factors. So you want to push a little harder, a little softer, a little higher voltage, a little lower voltage. Say if you built your pack with 19 cells in series or 18 cells in series or 20 or 21, it allows you to adjust those factors to match it up perfectly with the pack that you have. So let's put my order in for my cells and I'll get to work designing the overall layout of the battery pack, the way it's physically going to come together, how I'm going to uh, have little battery monitoring plugs on it so I can take a snapshot of how healthy the pack is. And there's no BMS because they're dumb.